dedicates this course unto you. Spiritual gifts, what they are, how they manifest or operate. Father, have your way and empower your, all of us with your truths. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, we begin a brand new course and it's consistent with what we have been learning. This is part of the suite of courses that has to do with ministry. And so having finished the course of ministry, discover, pursue, fulfill, we raised a number of issues in that course that had to do with spiritual gifts. And so we now want to expand and give a, get an understanding of spiritual gifts from a point of scripture, not what somebody said. You know, most times when you read books, you hear somebody repeat what was said 250 years ago, 300 years ago, 150 years ago. You know what? There was little light in those days. And so with that little light, what people declared was severely deficient. For instance, almost every minister of the gospel, almost every Christian knows the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John which is very important, the biography of Yeshua, who he was, or who he is, and what he did. But the master plan of the church is not in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The master plan of the church is in the Pauline epistles. Elohim bypassed Peter, James, John, all of them, and picked an enemy of the gospel, confronted him, knocked him off, and got him blinded, and Saul, then I became Paul. The Lord gave him the master plan of the church. If you don't know the Pauline epistles, you will never be able to teach the saints about the true church, the kingdom church, the organic church. What you teach people is unconsciously the organizational church, the building church. You teach people Old Testament mixed with New Testament. And so, brothers and sisters, at the core of the church is this issue of spiritual gifts, what they are and how they manifest. If you know your gifts, you know your assignment on earth. Every other thing hinges on it. If you don't know your gifts, you may be engaged in dead works of religion, rituals, and activities inside buildings on certain holy days. And so, Course 104, under the new course notation of the Global School of Ministry, we're going to study this probably over a period of two weeks, maybe 10, 12 lessons summary. Just give you the basics in this series we're doing. You can always go to the website gsom.ac and True Kingdom, uh, I mean, uh, Kingdom Books Club to download the full book and study about 249 pages and study to show yourself approved unto Elohim along with the scriptures. What we're going to do here is give you those key punchy truths that will basically bring you into full understanding of this subject matter. And you'll be able to, you know, take your place in the body. Men and brethren, Paul was the one the Lord used to define the church as an organic entity. An organism, not an organization, a body, not a building. One that is organically connected to the head and to each other. And then writing to the church at Corinth, Paul said something in 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. You know you were Gentiles. Carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of Elohim calleth Yeshua a cost. No man can say that Yeshua is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Men and brethren, what follows in that first Corinthians chapter 12 is an exhaustive treatise on the organic nature of the church as the very body of Yeshua, its head, and how each saint is a specific, identifiable, functional part of the body, which is made complete only when each part does its share in love. And this is the same principle Holy Spirit used to espouse in the book of Romans. And brothers and sisters, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, again, interestingly, 
Paul began his treatise with three basic synoptic uh, uh, statements. One is the need for death of the self-life, a saints lay all on the altar. Two is the need to renew the mind so that you think according to kingdom culture, not your natural way of thinking. Number three, the need to avoid pride out of gift projection and thinking you are something more than others. So Romans 12, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to Elohim, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. 3, for I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as the Elohim had dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we be many are one body in Yeshua, and everyone members of one another. And so first, starts with that background, we now get into dig into definitions for the spiritual gift. There are three definitions and each of them is okay in itself and you could combine two or three. What are the three definitions? Number one, in contemporary language, a spiritual gift is a measure of Holy Spirit endowed on the saint to use in representing Yeshua on the earth. In other words, the plan of Yeshua for his organic body is to use saints individually and severally, individually and collectively, as channels to manifest himself in everyday life so that we can be his witnesses anywhere he places us. Number two, to use an even more illustrative description, a spiritual gift is the showing up of Holy Spirit through the vessel of a saint, the showing up. The, but what this means is that whenever Holy Spirit uses the vessel of the saint to impart a blessing or demonstrate a spiritual gift, Yeshua is on display. This is consistent with what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The manifestation, the showing up of the Holy Spirit through a vessel is given to every man to profit all. Take note of that. Number three, a spiritual gift can be defined as a part of Yeshua he has made each saint to be so that all of us can bring forth what is in us to build up each other and collectively make the church or the saints who are called out of the world system a strong witness of the reality of his presence and power. In Ephesians 4.15 it says, they're speaking the truth in love. They grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Yeshua, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto the defining of itself in love. Brothers and sisters, so as the name implies, spiritual gift is not a natural talent. You see, everybody on earth, every human being has a talent or two or three or four or five Elohim gifts to everybody. Just as he makes the sun to shine upon the righteous and the sinners, he makes the rain to fall upon all. He doesn't put, you know, rain in this street. That house gets rain. The other house being seen as the Lord get rain. Everybody gets rain. Everybody gets sunshine. Every human being has a talent, something you can do well. So we're not speaking of talent. Spiritual gift is reserved only for those who are born again, his children who are redeemed by the blood, brothers and sisters. So the basic concept is the organic nature of the body as a living organism. Take note of that. And many people, why they don't grab spiritual truth is that their mind is fixated on organizational things where you join a, a church, you join it as an organization, as a corporation, you go into a building on certain holidays, you do some rituals. That's not church. That is an, a worldly concept of church. It's not a building you go into on certain holidays. It's not an organization you join. 
the church is the body of Yeshua, the spiritual body of Yeshua. And the unit of the church where you may be part of local assembly or whatever is a part of a whole. And to truly understand what spiritual gifts are the function, it is needful to be delivered of that religious concept of the church. If you don't get delivered, you just be making a wrong assumption. Men and brethren, the Lord wants us to grasp that perspective of the church as a body. Different parts. You know how many parts are in a human being? Each one has a function. And once each one is attacked, is diseased, the whole body may begin to shut down. The same way we got to go understand the church as one where the Lord has given various abilities to various parts of his body so that each part is supposed to be functional. No pastor, no overseer should be satisfied that people just come to church. They see that as a dead dormant lady. They just come as consumers of the anointing and they have nothing to offer. No, that is dead church right there. It is not a living church. If it's a living church, everyone will tend to discover what is it in me? What is it the Lord has placed in me so that I can use it to serve the Lord and to serve his people? And once we have that quest and test, you see a massive revival. You see an effusion of the Holy Spirit moving one more time upon the church of Yeshua so that everybody begins to function the way they ought to and the whole body is edified. Brothers and sisters, spiritual gifts are given entirely by the sovereign will of Elohim. They are therefore of grace, not of works. It's not of human ability, just like salvation. We are told in Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yeshua HaMashiach. Even we have believed in Yeshua that we might be justified by the faith of Yeshua, not the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of Elohim, not of works, lest any man should boast. And 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 7 says, For who make thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why does that glory as if thou hast not received it? So brothers and sisters, just as Yeshua was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, as we are told in the book of uh, Revelation 13 verse 8b, the same way Elohim knew you and me before the foundation of the world. Before we came into this world, he knew who he wanted to create. He knew who he wanted to bring into the earth ring. Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah 29, 11. If I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. 4 says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of this world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. So the plan of Yeshua is simply this. All those redeemed by his blood, not a few, not some, all should discover and live out their spiritual gifts. Why? The spiritual gifts is the basis of your role in the priesthood of all believers called the Melchizedek priesthood. You are called out of the world you get to know your gifting, use it to serve Elohim, serve other people, serve humanity, even as you serve the body, and that's you functioning. First Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Priests serve between God and man. Kings rule and reign. And holy nation, a peculiar people, I should show for the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Elohim, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, strangers from the world system, pilgrims who are passing through, our time is debted. 
That's why the Lord wants us to number our days. Do you know if you recognize that your time is dated and you number your years, you are likely to discover all the Lord has placed in you and discharge it knowing that one day you are going to go before him. And so, men and brethren, it's so important to remember what we are started in discover and fulfill your ministry. Every saint is called to be a priest of the Most High. Everyone. And the facility to bring this to pass is the spiritual gift that is bestowed on you for the benefit of that purpose. And our present dimension of the priesthood is a dress rehearsal. Brothers and sisters, as priests and kings, what we are doing now is a dress rehearsal because a day is coming. As you see all these things happening in the world, they are not ordinary. A lot of Christians are rushing into things without understanding. You ask yourself, what is the context of everything? And the context of everything is that the world is marching slowly, steadily towards that day of days. The king of kings is going to return to this earth. Men and brethren, when he returns, he's going to rule and reign over the earth realm as the second Adam. You see, the first Adam lost it by sin. The second Adam gained it by obedience to the Father. And the second Adam just came as a lamb, first coming. His second coming is going to rule as the king of kings and the lords of laws, a liar of tribal Judah is not going to come as a weakling, a babe in the manger is going to come to the saints who triumphed along with him. He will rule the world, stay in Jerusalem, that's why it's a contested city. And listen to this, all those who overcame, who discovered their gifts and callings and fulfilled it, he's going to post them across the world. Because the world is not yet due for burning by fire, which you read in Peter. No, there's a thousand years the Lord is going to show what this world would have been like if Adam and Eve had not sinned. The second Adam is going to rule over every world where there will be no death, no crisis, no confusion, no evil, no plot, no subplot, nothing negative. Universal peace. Universal righteousness, universal joy, and we're going to rule as kings with him. That's why he's called the king of kings. So what we are doing now, what the Lord wants us to do now is to discover these things and walk in them as a dress rehearsal so that when you are posted over Vanuatu or South Africa or United States of America or United Kingdom or France or anywhere in the world where you are, if you are posted to rule and reign over there, you to be an extension of what you're already practicing on this side of eternity. So brothers and sisters, what we're going to do in this video edition basically is to go into some things. One is this beginning where we define, then we're going to go straight after these two, the types of gifts and the list of them. For instance, the next lesson, we look at the root gifts or basic service gifts. What are they? They come when you are born again. Then we're going to look at the enabling gifts. Number two, what are they? They come when you are filled with Holy Spirit. And we're going to look at number three, the fivefold of his gifts. There are some people he will call to the fivefold, not all. And then number four, we're going to look at other spiritual gifts that are found in different portions of scripture. A little here, there, this one, there. The ability, remember, to do things beyond the norm, beyond human ability. The Lord does it by grace using your vessel. So none of us is to be proud or arrogant. None of us is to withhold it. The gifts are to profit with all. It's for the benefit of all. It's not for you who have the gift. You are simply a dispenser. You are simply a vessel in the hand of the Lord through which he's going to touch that person with what that person needs. When we understand this, our, there'll be a shift in our mindset about church. We're not going to be looking at church in terms of organization and buildings again. We're we'll looking at church in terms of expression of the divine purpose through the overall body and through the national, the body in the nation and through the local assembly or whatever the Lord connects you with 
and you take your place. So why are they having all this ambition of people to own their own and own their own and own people and, and do ABC attendance, building cash? No, those things will throw, be thrown out of the window. And we can operate in purity of heart. We can operate serving one another, serving the Lord and serving one another. We can operate with the joy of the Lord being our strength. Brothers and sisters, again, you can study the whole uh, text in spiritual gifts, what they are, how they manifest. Go to the website www.gsom.ac or www.kingdombusclub.com. But in this presentation, over a course of maybe 10 or 12 lessons, we are going to, or be 14, it doesn't matter, we're going to give you what it takes for you to we'll cut through the chase and give you that which will empower you. And when trusting the Lord, you'll be open, diligent to know your gift, to know who you are, to know the basket of gifts. Most people have more than two, three, four, five. Only very few people you have maybe one. And those few people are few indeed. Majority have multiple. So if you've not known your gifts, get ready. If you assume what you thought you knew, get ready. If you have known, get ready to even know more. And we're going to trust the Lord to bring this clarity to you. By word of assignment, which of the three definitions spiritual gifts resonated most in your heart. Two, what new thing did you learn from the lesson today? I want to encourage you, you know, share with individuals, share in groups you belong to, share on different platforms, not just Facebook, by email, share with people, let people know the truth that sets free so that we can become the organic church Yeshua had in mind, the living, loving organism that he had in mind for his church to be and to do. So that all glory will be ascribed to him. Remember the theme of this month. What did we say? Let me pray and remind you that. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am, just have your way by your spirit. Activate gifts and callings in brethren for your word say you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Set your people free from ignorance. Set your people free from assumptions. Let your people walk in the fullness of light and your name will be glorified and the body will be edified and all honor will be ascribed to you in Yeshua Jesus' name. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day by about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same at Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday and then in the evening of Sunday we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6 after 6 another one up to 7 so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks this course you just listened to all these lessons you know there's an ebook we have free of charge everything we do is free but more importantly you can actually do your program on you know ebooks you can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua Jesus is empowered with truth remember it is the teach train equip activate and release paradigm absolutely free of charge have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon